Hi, um, this is the abbreviated worship service for Sunday, June 6, 2021, the second Sunday after Pentecost. And you may know that Wheel Jam is going on in Huron, and this is one of Mike's big um, projects, as throughout the years he's not been able to be with us on that day because it is quite demanding on him. So since I had the YouTube, I'm not going to be doing the daily devotionals anymore, but there may be more times when we're going to be doing our abbreviated worship service like this. And so um, we've gone into the green um, where the green Sunday of the, uh, this is the first green Sunday of the Pentecost season. Of course, green was in uh, Epiphany, but now we have the color green up yet, and this is the season of growing. And so I want to just share with you just a little bit from our caring conversations, um, the questions to ponder for worship today. When people disagree and are unkind to each other, how can they resolve the dispute? We've got a lot of that stuff going on, don't we? What is something you would describe as evil? And of course, we've got a lot of um, malware and everything like that that has the word evil in it, don't we? And then um, I'm not going to be reading the gospel today. I'm, my sermon's going to be on the second reading from 2 Corinthians. And so, but just to alert you, those of you who have the Taking Faith Home sheet, read the devotional section that covers the Mark 3 passage for our gospel. With that, we begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, our one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. As we are drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us now confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your rays when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we go? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. And again, the good news for us, beloved in God. In Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, who is the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved to abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us this day. Amen. Let us again pray. All-powerful God, in Jesus Christ you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him, that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now our second reading for today from 2 Corinthians. It, um, the introduction goes this way. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that um, the grace of God extends to more and more people. And so we hear St. Paul talking about this with the 2 Corinthian people. The reading is from 2 Corinthians 4, 15 to 5, chapter 5, verse 5. So Paul goes on, we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what, we, what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed 
When we have taken it off, we will be not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The judge had instructed the jurors, I want you to go to the deliberation room and wait for me. The 12 jurors had just completed a difficult deliberation and they unanimously reached a verdict. Having given their verdict to the judge, the bailiff then read it. It was after 8 p.m. The jurors had worked through the evening. They hadn't eaten a thing. They were hungry and tired. The judge came in, thanked the jury for their service, and then said, You know, jurors like you restore my faith in people. Dear friends, faith is a positive attitude that's given us from God. In, our, in this second reading, St. Paul calls us to confidence. There are many reasons why our confidence can fail. Like that judge who presides over trial after trial, we can look at the obvious problems we face, and we can so easily lose heart. Like that judge who sees the difficult things in life almost every day, we can be overwhelmed by the difficulties of life, whether the difficulties are our own or those around us. Paul sees faith as a positive attitude, a gift from God to us. Paul's relationship with the church in Corinth was not easy. In fact, he had been rejected by them and his good friend Timothy had been ridiculed by them. As a result, Paul wrote a stern letter to them and they had a change of heart and behavior in time. So in this part of 2 Corinthians, Paul speaks of the confidence that they can have and we can have after these difficulties. Paul does not want them or us to be confused. Our ability to be faithful and positive is God's doing. In the first verses of chapter 5, Paul admits that life can at times be difficult. When we read, for while we are still in this tenth, tent, in this earthly existence, we groan under our burden because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed. And so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. But this inner belonging, for, all inner longing is for immortality. And in itself, it's God's doing. God has prepared us for this and given us the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. This is what gives Paul the power to make this confident claim. It's not a naive confidence by any means. When we honestly face our world and take a look at the challenges set before us, only then are we ready for a positive attitude of faith that cannot disappoint us. That is what Paul calls confidence. It's an inner assurance that no matter what is happening, no matter how we might be in despair, God is still in charge. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Martin Luther was prone to depression, but came to know this positive attitude of Paul. Luther shares this confidence in the explanation of this petition of the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Luther says, God's will shall be done. We only pray that it will be done in us, or in words Luther uses elsewhere, you can serve God willingly, or you can serve God anyway. That is being positive through faith. Like the judge who faces very painful situations in human life and yet exactly there finds faith in humankind, we discover 
our confidence in real lives. That is why we can join Paul in stating we walk by faith and not by sight. We will not be prisoners to our circumstances, nor the challenges we face, no matter how difficult they can be. We know the will of God and are part of that good and gracious will that we call God's love. As God's people, we know that beyond our sight is the hope found in faith. A hero of mine from American history is President Abraham Lincoln. This melancholic, trice bankrupt politician could lead this nation through the Civil War. And that was his perspective, leading by faith, not by sight. He once said, I can see how it might be possible for a man to look down upon the earth and be an atheist, but I cannot conceive how he could look up into the heavens and say there is no God. If we really want to live, we have to realize that faith is more than seeing. To be a human being means we suffer from constant nearsightedness. We cannot see tomorrow, and too often I cannot even see what's going to happen the next hour of the day. <clears throat> we see the past with 2020 vision, but our lives are filled with experiences we do not intend to happen. How many of us have made decisions that we expect to turn out one way and have gone completely the opposite direction? <clears throat> Abe Lincoln had men, made many decisions during his life, especially during the Civil War, with the expectation that peace would come, but it didn't. His confidence was not simply seeing what was in front of him. It was looking to the one who was above all his circumstances, but yet working within him, of course, our God. Life is also more than control. The older I get, the older that all of us get, the more aware we are that we cannot control a lot of things. Paul knew that, Luther knew that, Abraham Lincoln knew that. And it is there that they found the inner confidence that was always there. When we are young, we can decide to twist and turn with the changing winds of popularity. But hopefully, we learn to live by faith in Jesus and not by the sight of things around us. We as adults, you know, we can choose, choose to trust in God walking with us and within us and leading us. Or we can very easily lose heart and hope. Our choice is clear. Please ask God to forgive you and to give you God's positive attitude. Or you can be thrown to the winds of the inconsistencies of our world. Jesus invites us to put our hope to work. Behave as if we really believe that we walk by faith and not just by sight. Hope is a powerful force that can exist in us. Hope, it's invisible. We cannot see it. We cannot measure it. We cannot really explain it or even predict it when it will rise up within us. But we cannot have hope and not act upon it. Paul could, claim, could not claim his radical confidence without putting it to use in his life. He had every reason to give up on those ungrateful, abusive Christians in Corinth. But he could not walk away from the hope he held for them. And our Lord Jesus will never walk away from us. God has an eternal hope in each of us. When Jesus entered this world, there was every reason for God to just give up on all of humanity, go in despair and the, to let humanity go into the despair and violence of the time. Instead, God's eternal hope took the form of a baby born in the small town of Bethlehem, just as God had promised. 
How many times have you been close to giving up only to have God step in and prove that giving up was unreasonable? I have. It's happened to me more times than I would like to admit, but that's okay, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Maybe you have come here today and you're positive your faith is running dry. Maybe your work is not going well. Maybe you are without work. You might be struggling with your marriage, with a child, with a grandchild, or another relationship. And you wonder when God's going to show up. God is here. It's okay. We walk by faith, not by sight. You may be struggling with issues of faith and your confidence of God is just about gone. You may feel like you have seen too much, felt too much, heard too much, to have a positive outlook. That's okay. God is still here restoring your hope. We walk by faith, not by sight. Look beyond the immediate. Dare to live bigger. Live bigger than your situation. Live bigger than your present and your past. Live bigger because our God is so much bigger than all of these. Amen. I'll, I am now going to be praying our prayer of the church, followed by praying the Lord's Prayer. We come to our triune God in prayer. God of wholeness, we pray for all believers around the world. Unify us in service of the gospel, that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. God of the universe, we pray for this creation that you have created. We pray for our gardens, our waterways, our creatures near to us, the diverse forms of life that remain unseen. And Lord, we so pray for favorable weather. You know we need the, the, more, the moisture that, is, that can bring forth the fruit of the earth. We know that this heat is only draining it so dry so it cannot come. Lord, we pray that you be with us. Help us to always remain hopeful in the seed. Teach us to treat our natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions cause harm to your beloved creation. God of all people, we pray for harmony among our nations, and we pray for harmony within this nation. We claim to be a democracy, but we know democracy only lasts from generation to generation. We pray that you be with all of our national leaders so that democracy does not die. Cast out from us the unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with, in, with everyone for the common good. Lord, we pray that you be with all of our military we lift up Michael, Sean, and Dane, and we pray that you be with us as we live as a country, with our military doing service to you and to our country. God of abundance, we pray for all who are oppressed and in any need. Encourage all who have begun to lose heart. Lord, we pray that your healing hand will continue upon Mary Ann, Hunter, Tony, Tammy, Maggie, Pastor Al, Jeff, Ron, Darwin, Pastor Heidi, Pastor Zachariah, Jerry, Betsy, Patricia, Dorothy, Judy, Dan, Lila, Jordan, Dee, Aurora, Duane, Mackenzie, and all we now name silently before you in our hearts. Lord God, strengthen and renew us all with your Holy Spirit. God of righteousness, we pray for our Savior's Lutheran Church in Huron as we worship. We lift up those in our postcard ministry, Sarah Wolf and Ron and Karen Ziegeldorf. Set our gaze upon those things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, we lift up our prayers to you, trusting in your abiding grace. All this we pray through the prayer your Son taught us, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to do just a little bit with announcements. Um, uh, on Friday and Saturday, early in the day, we got done about 1 o'clock with Synod Assembly. It, it was an interesting time, us all zooming in and stuff like that and having to take patience and doing the things for voting. And, and um, we finally got our handles on that. And just um, be willing to talk to um, Donna Pownell and Terry Larson have been our our, um, our voting delegates, and along with me, of course. <laughs> and um, we thank you for your prayers for our Synod Assembly and continue to pray for our Synod as we go through this post-COVID time. And now for this coming week, we plan to have Bible study at 10 o'clock on Tuesday, and then we'll worship in-house again next Sunday. And and I'm um, thinking, um, we'll see if Mike and I can get together. Otherwise, it will be an abbreviated service like this again. So receive the benediction. The blessing of God who provides for us, who feeds us and journeys with us. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you now and forever. Amen.